Salam, you're watching the International Daily Roundup, People's Dispatch's selection of some of the top stories from around the world. Let's first take a look at today's headlines. Tunisian journalists are set to strike on the 2nd of April. Starbucks employees in Seattle win a vote to unionize. Haiti faces heightened food insecurity. And mathematician Dennis Sullivan bags the Abel Prize. First up, journalists in Tunisia will go on a nationwide general strike on the 2nd of April to protest government control and interference in public media and to defend freedom of speech and freedom of the press in the country. The National Syndicate for Tunisian Journalists, the country's main journalist union, announced on Wednesday, March 23rd that it has approved a mass strike by journalists. Union official Amira Mohammed cited, I quote, the president's attempt to control public media and the authorities' insistence on hitting the sector as the two main reasons that forced journalists to take this collective strike action. The Journalists' Union has criticized the president and the current regime for a number of recent measures and reforms to drastically reduce the independence of state media. These include attempts to bring state television directly under the control of the president, banning state television from inviting opposition political figures on debate programs, and severe restrictions regarding reporting on information that the government might deem sensitive. Several journalists who refused to reveal their sources have been arrested by the government as well. On July 25th last year, the president, through a series of extraordinary measures, seized virtually all executive and legislative power in the country, dismissing the prime minister and government, as well as suspending national parliament. These actions have been widely condemned in the country and by the international community. Next up, in a symbolic win for, for a Starbucks store in the coffee giant's hometown of Seattle, its employees have voted unanimously to be represented by a union, becoming the seventh unionized Starbucks outlet in America. Employees at five stores in Buffalo, New York, and one in Mesa, Arizona, have already voted in favor of a union, and the staff of six other Seattle outlets have plans to unionize as well, the Seattle Times has reported. The workers unionized with Starbucks Workers United, an affiliate of the Service Employees International Union. Out of the 13 employees eligible to vote, nine voted in favor, one ballot was challenged and none voted against. Capitol Hill employees said they unionized in support of their demand for better health care coverage and company policies. It was, and I quote, a fundamental and necessary way to participate in Starbucks and its future as partners, end quote. Now the employees will negotiate with the company for a first contract. With only 1.2% of employees in food services and drinking places being members of unions, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the employees feel that their victory sends a big message. The Caribbean nation of Haiti has one of the highest levels of food insecurity in the world. The World Food Program on March 22nd warned that nearly half the country's total population is at risk of hunger and needs immediate food assistance. The UN agency, citing the latest Integrated Food Phase Classification Report, the global standard for measuring food insecurity, reported that between March and June 2022, four and a half million Haitians, that's 45% of the population, would be suffering from severe hunger. The WFP further reported that of these, more than three million Haitians, that's 32% of the population, would be in a situation classified as the crisis phase, and over 1.3 million would be in the emergency phase. WFP representative in Haiti, Pierre Honora, through a video conference, pointed out that the situation is worrisome, being the worst registered since 2018, he said. In 2018, half of Haiti's population was undernourished and the country's global hunger index score rose to 35 from 28 in 2009, reaching the alarming threshold. The official highlighted that the Caribbean country's dependence on food imports places Haitians in an unfavorable position due to the devaluation of its currency against the US dollar. Onra also stated that 70% of the goods in Haitian stores are imported, including basic products such as rice, 80% of which are imported. And finally, the Abel Prize, one of the most prestigious in mathematics, has been bagged by mathematician Dennis Sullivan, based in the United States. The 2022 Abel Prize has been uh, offered to Sullivan for his contributions to the field of topography, which studies qualitative properties of shapes and related fields. The Norwegian Academy of Science and Letters, which announced the prize, hailed him for, I quote, changing the landscape of topology by introducing new concepts, proving landmark theorems, answering old conjectures, and formulating new problems that have driven the field forwards, end quote. First awarded back in 2003, the Abel Prize represents a lifetime achievement. 
the 24 able laureates conferred with the prize so far are all renowned mathematicians. And that's all we have on this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more details on all of these stories, head to our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and do give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, as well as Instagram. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.